Halo is a great universe, but sometimes things don't make sense. Whether it's the length of the Pillar of Autumn, or this skyscraper in Halo 4 somehow being 512 floors high? On very few occasions, sometimes we have to take a closer look and see what's actually going on, and sometimes things just don't make sense. So today we wanted to maybe do a video looking at some of the things in the Halo universe, some maps and campaign levels that make zero sense whatsoever to us. And it gets pretty crazy because on some of these we thought about it way more than probably anyone else ever asked us to. No one asked us to actually, but way more than anyone should have even thought to have to think about it. But we were just really curious because we thought something was weird and just the fallout of that was interesting in itself. Starting things off, when we were doing all of this research on possible cut content and the Halo 3 Guardian and all that other stuff, we really were looking closely at Epitaph and Citadel. However, there's one really weird thing that's going on here as if you look out the window of Citadel or you just look outside on Epitaph, you notice that these maps have the same exact skybox and they're in the same location. Matter of fact, they're supposed to be a part of the same structure. And while the set piece is amazing, we really love just this vast open desert aesthetic the fact that this is supposed to be somewhere in that epitaph tower does kind of raise a few questions for us. Now, just because of the height of this building from looking out the window, you would assume we're probably really high up on the structure, perhaps on top of epitaph. Though if you are on the level epitaph and you go outside or you just look up, you can easily see that there's no real way that a structure the size of Citadel could possibly stand on top of this structure. Which, okay, maybe then this structure would be at the base of the tower, even if the windows seem a little disproportionate. But if you actually take a closer look and you look at Citadel itself, there's these skylights or these windows on the ceiling that clearly show there's no tower stacked up on top of this building. So while of course in the lore sense, these buildings are one in the same, and we wouldn't have had a technical expectation of being able to see another multiplayer map alluded to that was attached, we don't think there's any real way that these two things would work with just the way that these two levels were originally constructed. Going all the way back to Halo Combat Evolved on the level The Ma, Halo fans were introduced to the first ever Warthog run, and it was iconic, but the Pillar of Autumn's only supposed to be 1.17 kilometers long, which actually would be contradictive here considering our waypoints telling us that we have to travel three and a half kilometers to actually escape. This is one that a lot of people have pointed out over the years, however there are some people who have kind of looked into this and crunched various numbers to question if there was a possibility where this could make any sense. I mean, hypothetically, if there was some sort of service corridor that stretched the entire Pillar of Autumn and had all of these curves and ramps, technically speaking, since the route isn't directly straight and there's different turns and stuff along the way, there might be a chance that Master Chief does have to navigate three miles in the 1.17 kilometer long length that the ship is, though it wouldn't make sense why the waypoint marker is somehow accounting for all of the twists and turns rather than just giving the direct distance away something is like it does in the rest of the game. We actually loaded up Halo Combat Evolved because we wanted to look into this, but then we realized there was an even bigger issue that obviously has been there since the beginning on the Maw. I mean, don't get us wrong, the Pillar of Autumn is awesome, but it is really funny that on the Maw, there's this one bridge just right there in the middle of everything connecting one part of the ship to the other part of the ship and Luke put together a really great diagram and explanation as to what's going on with this bridge this is what the pillow of autumn actually looks like and this is what it looks like according to Halo C okay so this next one is one I looked into way too much came up with a ton of conspiracy theories I even had to do some math to figure some of this stuff out and it still doesn't really make full sense to me but maybe someone else can try to break this one down on Halo 4 the level skyline is definitely one of my favorite multi player maps. It's just such a cool atmosphere. You're just fighting up there in the building and you can see off some city in the distance and it looks really cool. But here's where things get really spicy. If you look at this screen, it actually shows that the players are on the 512th floor of this skyscraper building. Now, mind you, to this day on Earth, the tallest building in the world only has around 170 floors. So yeah, Halo 4, futuristic, they can have super tall buildings, though 512 floors 
did seem a bit excessive to me just on the surface level. I really wanted to try to take things further and see if there was any way we could grasp the height and the actual massive size that this tower must be for us just to be up there on the 512th floor. And oh boy, did this get interesting. Now apparently if you take a closer look outside of the map, it turns out that the skybox that they used in the outer borders, kind of showing the city landscape that you can see, was actually taken from a real world location and it's a picture of Paris, France with the Eiffel Tower photoshopped out. Seriously, when one of my friends told me about that, I first was skeptical thinking maybe they just drew inspiration from Paris and went with that. But if you look closer, you can actually start to recognize some landmarks that come directly out of Paris, France and the area surrounding the Eiffel Tower. Matter of fact, this specific building was the most standout building that I could recognize that really ended up being the main source of some sort of reference trying to put together how tall this building would actually end up being if we were to try to figure out the sight line distance of the structures down in the skybox compared to where we are in the tower. But as it turns out, that building in particularly is a famous monument in Paris known as, and literally, pardon my French, L'Ecole Militaire, which is a military school that was founded in 1750 after the War of the Austrian Succession. It's also right in front of the real world Eiffel Tower, which was able to give us an even better idea as to what we are looking at when we're looking off at the skybox and skyline. So then this is where things get a little bit complicated and I just did my best estimations with my math ability. My numbers probably aren't specific, but it could give us at least a good enough estimation as to whether or not this tower is at all to scale and could possibly be 512 floors high. So from skyline, I could see the building that we were just talking about and you can actually kind of track the road in the distance that goes from one block to the next. Using the sniper rifle, you can actually see on the right side of the Halo 4 sniper rifle. As you adjust your angle with your sniper rifle, it will actually tell you how many degrees you're looking down or how many degrees you're looking up. So I picked this specific street right here because it was easily noticeable. And looking down at this specific point, it was about a nine degree decline from staring off at an even 90 degree angle downwards. So we could use Pythagorean's theorem to potentially calculate the actual height of this building if we can figure out some of the angles and lengths that we have for some distances. Now, unless this is some weird funky building, we can assume that this building at the base is at a perfect right angle, as most buildings should be. But we do know looking down, we had that negative nine degree angle, meaning that this point over by that street is nine degrees upwards and our angle looking down at it is 81 degrees. From there, I figured out that the length of the street was about an alteration of three more degrees on the sniper rifle. And while I could have calculated the growth and scale of a road potentially coming closer, I felt like for the sake of just trying to get some crazy ballpark estimations, the easiest thing to do here was realize that one of these streets is worth about three total degrees. And if we go ahead and assume that this is a 90 degree angle that this building's on, all we then have to do is calculate the real world length of one of these streets to figure out the road's distance. So whatever distance that this street is, we just need to multiply that by nine and we can potentially get the distance from this point of interest to the base of the tower. So we took our 300 meters and multiplied it by nine and we ended up with 2,700 meters, giving us the ballpark distance from this point of interest to the base of the tower, which then we can graph out a triangle to figure out the actual height of this building. So if we know that the distance to the object is 2,700 meters at a nine degree angle of elevation, it would mean that the object height was 427.6 meters, making it just about half as tall as the tallest building in the world, which of course only has 163 floors. But even then, I still wasn't too confident in that being the actual height of the building. Since technically we weren't accounting for the adjustment of the angle as our point of interest would move closer to measure the distance when tracing it with the sniper rifle, we still thought that even though our numbers disproved the 512 floors, the estimation of the distance and the height of the building was maybe still an overestimation and our numbers might have been bigger than what the true height of the tower was. So this is where I reached out to Rocket Dim Entree for some help. We dusted off the old algebra book and we had to take a look at some trigonometry theories. This is probably basic stuff for everyone else, but for me it was a little over my head. But nonetheless, we should have been using something called a sine theorem to calculate how the angle of the road would change at a closer distance and then we essentially would be getting a more accurate depiction of how tall the building truly was. So for example, if you stand here, you have one angle. However, if you come a little closer to the 
building and you're standing here, your angle is now different. And being able to calculate that can actually give us the overall distance to the tower, which then would allow us to calculate the distance of the tower. And while of course, we're still making estimations based off of a skybox and Google Maps, this time around we calculated 186 meters, which we felt was a lot closer to whatever this building more than likely was. But just to be extra sure, we decided to reach out to Tepig from our Halo 3 ODST glyph search to travel to the location in Paris and check it out just to make sure some new skyscrapers didn't just randomly show up that could be 512 floors high. And he had a look around, he even sent us a video, and he even pointed out this building in the distance, which turns out to be a lookout tower called Garay Montparnasse. And upon further research, we strongly believe that whatever stock photo ended up being used in the skybox was taken from this specific building. I mean, look at this, all of these angles line up so incredibly cleanly. It's also one of the tallest buildings in Paris and its official height is 200 10 meters. It was really interesting to go through this whole process of trying to figure out the height of the building, trying to figure out real world locations, and trying different methods along the way to figure out what it was and what it actually turned out to more than likely be. And while our initial equations might have been a little bit off, at least we know for certain that there is no way that this building is 512 floors high. In other maps that don't make sense, you know the plaza level in Halo 5? There's this little food court section, and our friend Hamish showed us it and he brought up the question as to how do workers get inside of their little restaurants like there's no doors or anything nearby so they'd have to crawl through the counter and we just feel like that wasn't really efficient you know this one's probably on the same level as our questioning of skyline i do also have to say the level keys while there's nothing necessarily jarring about it if you've ever glitched outside of the map and you just look at the structure itself for what it is it really is this odd cliff type canyon structure that was just caved out and it's just this round object just existing. I always thought that the look of this area when you just jump a little bit outside the map was a little bit odd. The district level in Halo 2 is also really interesting because there's a movie theater here and everybody knows movie theaters all shut down permanently in the real world year of 2020 and into 2021. So how could there be a movie theater in the future? Explain that Bungie. Also some other ones that were really good contenders that I wanted to maybe talk about were some of the levels in Halo like Highlands never really fully made sense to me because we have this instance where we see in the distance in the beautiful skybox the planet just straight up being glassed yet here's some camp where some red Spartans and some blue Spartans are supposed to be playing some big team battle even though the whole planet's about to go under I just thought that it's just one of those really interesting premises I know in the Halo canon multiplayer kind of got retconned into being a part of war games so even if this was war games it just seems like a really weird training scenario to have Spartans try to train? I don't know, maybe it's just me. I do like Sword Base. I think it's an interesting building, whether it's the multiplayer version or the campaign version where you're walking through this. Though I do think it's really weird how there's all of these ramps just kind of leading upwards at these angles and everything's connected with bridges or something. From an architectural standpoint, it just doesn't fully seem like maybe this is the optimum way to have people travel from one end of this area to the other. I mean, grav lifts are cool, but maybe a few elevators or escalators. I mean, okay. It actually kind of reminded me of boarding action from Halo Combat Evolved, where it's just these two ships kind of alongside each other and you snipe back and forth, yet there's teleporters connecting them. And why would these ships be this close together in the first place? It actually almost makes us wonder if boarding action may have served as the inspiration behind Sword Base. Besides the fact that both of these maps have things in them that make no sense, if you look at some of the notes that Bungie had back in the day, boarding action was supposed to be a map used for jetpacking and then when Halo Reach introduced jetpacks we kind of have a similar type idea with two sides of a map it's just they both have their own issues I guess also if we go all the way back to combat evolved sure there's levels that are a little weird like Chiron TL 34 having all these teleporters that just connect you into a bunch of random nonsensical corridors but it was fun. We had things like Blood Gulch and Beaver Creek and Battle Creek where people just kind of wondered why we have these Spartans just in some random canyon, just a closed off canyon doing their own thing. But the real question really should be for the level Damnation because out of all of the levels here, there's this random platform section here. I don't know why they're here and 
Matter of fact, when Combat Evolved Anniversary would release, Penis actually fixed it a little bit. But these were just some of the maps that we really had always kind of questioned, and there's definitely a lot more that exist in the Halo universe, and we'll probably be taking a closer look for every time we jump back into Halo in the future. But if you have any that have kind of caught your eye, let us know in the comments down below. Also, be sure to subscribe with notifications on for more videos like this. Hey, if we popped up and you're recommended, thank you for watching our videos, but make sure you're subscribed so you keep getting more content like this.